Lady. You know what a trailblazer I am. Like the time I spend six months in Antarctica, teaching penguins to play Tetris to prevent the polar caps from melting. Crazy, they said. But you'll note, the polar caps are still there. Well, today we are delving into a different kind of trailblazing, light trails blazing. Yes, that fascinating photographic art form that once required long exposures and trained monkeys dancing around with flashlights. But today, we have geometry nodes. Let's get to it. Welcome to Blending with Algernon. I am Sir Algernon, Blender Instructor Extraordinaire, and this is my faithful companion, Freddy. All right, we are working in Blender version 4.3.2. Fresh canvas, please, Freddy. Thank you. Let's start by splitting our window and switching the bottom window to the Geometry Node editor. We'll need a starting object where our geonoodling can take place. Create a simple plane mesh. Press the new button in the Geometry Node window. And a new Geometry Node modifier will be added to our modifier stack for our plane. I need to make a point, Freddy. Delete our Group Input node and create a new Points node. Connect to the group output, and that is my point. A singular point from which our light trails will commence. But first, let's give it a bit of animation. For this, we'll call upon our trusted ally, the noise texture. Take the color output of the noise texture and connect it to the position input on our points node. On the noise texture switch, from 3D to 4D, and the W setting will miraculously appear. Changing its value gives our point life. Wonderful, Freddy. However, our point is dancing quite a bit off its origin point. Uncheck the normalized checkbox, and now our point's life is centered. If only real life were so easily centered, right, Freddy? Adjust our scale a touch to get the motion we like. Lovely. Next, let's keep that motion going. Unlike our usual method of keyframing along the timeline, today I'd like to use the scene time node to continuously and consistently increase the value of our W. Connect seconds to W and watch our beloved point take on a life of its own. Ah, it's the simple things in life, right, Freddy? As seeing your humble point frolic as if in a midsummer night's dream. Alas, our point needs some friends. Now we could simply copy what we have so far and join everything, but no, that would be inefficient. A simulation node will help. Let's create one. Let's get some space to work and create a simulation node. To create our light trails effect, we will need several points that follow each other. A simulation node will assist in creating the trail of nodes behind our initial firstborn, and, like lemmings diving off a cliff, they shall follow. So create a join node and place that within our simulation space. Connect our initial point to it and the output of the simulation to the final group output. Hit play and rejoice. A snake of points. The simulation node acts as a loop continually updating as we play, each time joining a new point to the end of the line of points. Most impressive. However, this promiscuity would carry on till the end of time or the number of frames in our animation, whichever comes first. So we must exact a limit by adding a delete geometry node within the simulation. For this, we will need to keep track of the number of points generated and when exceeding a certain amount, delete them. Let's get a compare node, which we will plug into the selection input. Set the type to integer and our comparison to greater than. Then a store attribute node for keeping track of our points. Place it within our simulation space and name it something memorable, such as snake length. This attribute is what we will increment as the simulation runs and creates each point. An add math node will do the trick. A value of one added to the stored name is what we need. Get a reference to the stored name with the named attribute node. Remember to set the type to integer, and also to enter the unique name, snake length. Connect away, and we're set. Now that we have all that sorted out, let's move over to the delete geometry node, and give it something to delete. 
duplicate the named attribute node and connect the attribute to A on the compare node. The value we set in B will be the number of points we want to keep. Let's create a store named attribute to hold the value for the maximum number of points we should keep. And let's place that towards the front, right after our points node. We must keep things tidy. Right, Freddy? Give it a clear name, such as max snake length. And then over by our compare node, get another named attribute node, select max snake length, and connect to the B input on the compare node. Back in the store named attribute node, enter a value for our snake length. I think 100 is a good starting point. We're getting there, Freddy. Our snake is taking shape, but its movements seem rather confined. Let's open it up a bit. Right after our noise texture node, let's add a math node and set it to scale. Let's increase the scale a bit and see how it looks. Steady your hand, Freddy. That's a bit too much. Better. Now let's create additional snakes by increasing the count in our points node to, say, three. Hmm. We still see only one, and that is because all of our snakes are taking the exact same path. However, by specifying the index of our points with an index node and connecting to the vector of the noise texture, each point will instance itself according to its own copy of the noise texture. There we go. Snake independence at last. Next, we need to convert the individual points of our snakes into a singular snake-like curve. So at the end of our simulation, let's create a points-to-curve node. Hmm. We've seemed to have solved one problem only to create another. Our points to curve node is treating all the points as a collective. We shall correct. We need to capture the index of each set of points as they are created. Get a store named attribute node and place it after the points node. The value will be the index node, which will act as a group ID for each set. Give it a proper name, such as points group. Then back at our points to curve node, we get the group index with a named attribute and reference the points group we just created. Also make sure all our types match. In this case, integer. So now as we increase our points count, the index is stored as a group ID, which is referenced after the simulation, and voila, individual snake curves. Absolutely charming. Get it, Freddy? Snakes? Charming? My wit never ceases to amaze me. I digress. Let's put some meat on these curves. After our points to curve node, add a curve to mesh node. For the profile curve, let's add a curve line. This will give our snakes a nice calligraphic feel. Lovely. It reminds me of a Chihuly sculpture, don't you think, Freddy? Let's see it in motion. I like it, Freddy. Time for some color. Add a set material node after our curve to mesh node. In the settings panel, click the materials tab and add new material. Give it a good proper name, such as Snake, and reference the name in the Set Material node. Then hop over to the Shader Editor. Let's see how a deep red looks, Freddy. Set it both in the base color colon and in the emission color. Give the emission a strength of about 3.5. Hmm, interesting, but not exciting. I think we should add a color ramp for more control and variety. Connect the color output to both the base color and the emission color. And let's try something, hmm, purplish. 
What we need here is to gradiate better and base that gradient on some sort of factor along the curve of the snake. So let's jump back to the geometry nodes panel and capture the spline parameter. Just after our points to curve node, add a store named attribute and name it spline. For the value, create a spline parameter and connect. Then back to the shader editor. In the shader editor, let's get a reference to the spline parameter with the attribute node. Type in the name spline and connect factor to factor. Now our color ramp can precisely control the gradient color from head to tail of our snake. Freddy, let's add some fiery colors for our snake. We should fade the tail to not only a darker color, but also to a fading alpha value. So grab the alpha from our color ramp and connect it to the alpha on the principled BSDF. Perfect. Our colors are gradiating throughout while slowly fading. Let's switch back to the Geometry Nodes editor. Before I forget, let's make sure we are in EV and tick ray trace on. In the World Settings panel, let's make the background full black. It's looking good, Freddy, but jaggy. Let's smooth out those curves by adding a set spline type node right after the points to curve node. Set the spline type from poly to nerbs. Nerbs. Another good word. Add it to our list, Freddy. Now that we've smoothed things out, let's work a bit more on animation. We want to have our snakes weave about as they are currently, but also to move about as a unit while doing so. So for this, let's create an empty to which our snake cluster shall follow. In our Geometry Nodes editor, let's first add a Set Position node after our Points node, then create an empty in our main 3D window. It should appear in our view as well as in our outliner. If our Geometry Node editor has disappeared, simply click on our Snake Cluster to get it back. Drag our newly created empty from the Outline panel into the Geometry Nodes panel. An Object Info node should appear. Connect the location from the Object Info node to the offset of the Set Position node. Hit Play on the timeline and drag the empty around. Our snake cluster is weaving and following. Brilliant! Now create a Bezier circle and attach our empty to it. As the circle rotates, so shall the empty and hence our snake cluster. In our timeline, move the playhead to the start and keyframe the Z rotation of our Bezier curve to zero by hovering over the field and pressing the letter I. Snap to the end and repeat for 360. Hit play and rejoice. Marvelous. Let's move to the front view and add a camera. Control Alt Numpad 0 to set the camera view. Adjust the camera position as needed to frame our masterpiece. And while we have the camera selected, let's go to the camera settings and under viewport display, set the passepartout to 1 to black out the area outside of our camera view. I really think that should be the default. Don't you agree, Freddy? I love it. Intriguing. Mesmerizing. Soothing. It achieves all this and more. Speaking of more, I think we should add more frames to our animation. In the timeline, increase the frames to 1000 and move the Bezier Circle end keyframe to the end. Also, let's have more rotations of our circle. In the end keyframe, click in the Z rotation field and let's have six rotations total. Type in 360 times 6. Blender will do the maths for you. Hover and press the letter I to keyframe it.
Yes, that's looking good. Perhaps uh, adjust the focal length a touch down to around a 35 millimeter. Now let's jump over to the compositor editor and add some glow to it all. Tick use nodes and add a glare node. Select bloom and connect. To see the result you will have to go to the viewport shading and select always under compositor. Another one that should be a default in my opinion. Freddy, dispatch an email to the developers. Very nice. Very nice indeed. However, if we jump towards the end, you'll notice that the trails simply stop when we reach frame 1000. That won't do. We need a nice, elegant fade-out of our snake cluster. Back to geometry nodes. We need a trigger that will stop creating the trails after a certain frame on our timeline. That trigger should be before we join the latest round of points to our snake. So, let's make some room as we are going to add a few new nodes. First, let's create a scene time node. This will allow us to check what frame we are currently on. Create a compare node and set the comparison to less than or equal. Connect the frame output of the scene time node to the A input of the comparison node. The frame number we are comparing to will go in B, but let's keep things tidy, shall we? Let's create a value node for our frame value and give it a proper name. Open the details panel on the right and select the node details. For the label of our new value node, enter start fading here. Uh, yes, that should be clear enough. Connect it up and let's set it to something close to the end. Say, 850. Now we have our comparison, but we need an actual switch to do something when triggered. So let's create a switch node. Also set the comparison node to integer. Hmm, our connection's detached. I call that a bug, not a feature. Right, Freddy? Reconnect. Then connect the result to the switch, which will boolean Lee. Select true or false, depending on the result. If true, we want to create the point. If false, we do nothing. Connect accordingly, and don't forget to disconnect our original connection in the join node. That looks logical to me. Let's test. Press play in the timeline. Looking good so far. Freddy, I'm impatient. Let's skip ahead. Working just as desired. Lovely. All right. Home stretch. Let's go into the render settings. Tick ray trace, if you haven't already. And in the color management section, let's go with very high contrast for a more intense feel. Also, let's set the points count to a robust 24. Check your output options. In our case, we will output as PNG frames to a folder. Click Render Animation and get a cup of tea while the magic happens. Hypnotic. Thank you for spending time with us today. Please consider liking, subscribing and sharing our efforts here. It is most appreciated. Until next time. Freddy, I can't stop watching. I might need something stronger than tea.